Mr. Grunler, thank you for your work at EPA. Can you tell me more about EPA's ability to meet the statutory deadline for finalizing RFS volume requirements each year by the end of November? Uh, EPA missed the deadline for 2013 by over nine months. The agency is now uh, is only now proposing requirements for 2014, again missing the deadline. And regardless of which side of the many sides to the RFS debate someone's, someone uh, is on, it seems like something we can all agree on that is EPA needs to reliably perform its role to enable this policy. Uncertainty is a significant challenge to the outcome. What assurances can EPA give this committee that they will finalize the volumes on time in the future? Do I get credit for proposing the 2015 uh, standard? Uh, well, ahead of time? if you do it on time, that would <laughs> well, be nice, uh, yes. We have proposed the 2015 standard um, last month for biomass-based diesel, um, Senator, and uh, I'm not proud of our record here. I, I'd like to be faster. Uh, the, the truth is that this has been a, uh, a very challenging policy issue with, with a lot of diverse point of views, as, as, as I heard last week and as, as we've heard today. Uh, this renewable fuels policy intersects a lot of different parts of the government, a lot of different kinds of policy beyond environmental policy, and that has made it, it challenging. Um, I am uh, <coughs> I'm, I'm hopeful, and our goal is certainly to finalize uh, these 2014 and 2015 standards uh, by this spring um, and hopefully get back on track. Uh, our whole intention here with this proposal uh, is to put the RFS on a more manageable trajectory that provides for both you know, growth over time of these, these fuels, um, as well as recognizing uh, the pace at which the market can respond to use them. And um, again, if, if we get it right, then perhaps the, the temperature will, will, will drop and people can, um, uh, can unite behind our approach that we're laying out. Great, thank you for that commitment. Mr. Chalk. Um, thank you for your work at DOE and your remarks today. You mentioned that one of DOE's R&D goals for cellulosic drop, drop in fuels. And can you tell me if there are other similar targets for algae drop in advanced biofuels, which DOE is pursuing in FY14? What challenges do algae R&D focus on? And what can innovators working in New Mexico uh, how can they partner with DOE to continue the work on these critical challenges in the future? Thank you for that question, Senator. Uh, yes, so we are looking at cellulosic, advanced biofuels, as well as algae. So we're really neutral on the feedstock. All the feedstocks are non-food sources. And uh, so we would include algae towards that goal if it can achieve that. That's, we view that as a little longer term pathway but certainly uh, we have uh, three pilot demonstrations right now that are making very, very good progress towards that goal. So we, we see the algae pathway is very important to achieving drop-in fuels, which really uh, get around this blend wall issue that we have because they are totally compatible with the infrastructure today. Great, thank you very much. Yield back, Madam Chair.